Hi friends, today we are going to discuss about legal aid for poor and vulnerable population. I am Dr. Suresh Bhadadmat, Professor of Psychiatry working at Nimans, Bangalore. I have done my PhD in law from National Law School. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. This presentation is for academic purpose only, not for legal opinion. If you want to have a legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. Conflict of interest, none. Let's understand what were the challenges of providing justice for the unreached, for poor people, for vulnerable population, for a person who is residing in a rural area. Can he access justice? This was a big question. Many of these rural population, poor people, vulnerable population, they are illiterate, uneducated. They are not aware of their rights. They have not read what is their rights. They feel the rich people are the people who get rights or who get access to justice and they are not entitled for justice under the constitution because they are illiterate. That is the biggest problem. So not being unaware, not being aware of their rights and even if the person is educated, even if the person knows about the rights, the cost of litigation puts him back foot. That means they will take step back before they think of going for any litigation in our court. The simple reason being is the cost of paying a lawyer, traveling to the district, traveling to the court very often, paying for various services of the law, that becomes very, very costly. At the same time, duration or delay in delivering justice for months, for years, and may, many a time, decades. And these poor and vulnerable population are scared of justice system because the mightier or the muscle man with the power, with the money will flex the justice. That was the scenario before 1987. Along this, the stress of litigation is huge for a common man or a person who are, who are is in a vulnerable population. Hence, considering these various scenarios, various legal luminaries sat together. At the same time, they looked into the Constitution of India, how we can make this access to justice a reality. Various legal luminaries, including Honorable Justice P.V. Bhagwati and various other people sat together and looked into the Constitution. The Article 14 clearly justified and guarantees equality before law and equal protection of law for everyone and every citizen. So, the vulnerable population, poor people should not be left in the ambit and they also deserve and get rights to justice. At the same time, right to access justice means also include right to legal aid, right to access court and also right to engage a counsel. With this, what we call it as a preamble, with this thinking, the uh, the constitution gave provisions under the fundamental rights. At the same time, Article 38.1 stated that the state shall promote the welfare of the people by securing and protecting the social order, including justice. That is under Article 38.1. The constitution states that the state shall in particular provide free legal aid and justice is not denied for anyone, including poor and vulnerable population. With this background, Legal Service Authority Act of 1987 was implemented. This legislation was implemented with the primary goal to take justice to the poor, vulnerable population, even to the rural population, so that the access to justice is for everyone. With this, the National Legal Service Authority was implemented on 1995. So let's understand who are eligible for this free legal aid. Following are the criteria which has been laid down under the National Legal Service Authority Act of 1987 the free legal aid is available for a member of SCST community, survivor of trafficking or a beggars, a woman and child, persons with mental illness, a persons with disability, a persons who has been admitted to mental hospital, survivor of mass disaster, including droughts, earthquake, any disaster for that matter. That means it's very interesting. Any survivor of a disaster can access for free legal aid, a industrial workman, a person who is in custody, either in the jail or in prison or in juvenile home. And also, if a person's annual income is less than specified by this respective state government. For example, in Karnataka, it is 50,000. In various other states, it may be 1 lakh. Depending upon the state financial status, they will fix the amount. On that basis, this free legal aid is given. What about women and senior citizens? Because women and senior citizens, majority of the time, they are dependent upon the sole breadwinner and many a time the woman and senior citizen wants to assert their rights against a person who is earning especially especially in women the husband or the father or a brother 
in senior citizen they are children so if they want to assert their rights then what will happen so legal service authority act was aware of this hence for women irrespective of their financial status free leg, free legal aid will be given and also to the children free legal aid is given irrespective of what is the uh, the income of their father or the parents so please do understand women and children get free legal aid irrespective of their income further senior citizens it also again senior citizens will get the free legal aid if their income is below certain number at the same time there has been a discretionary power has been given to chairman of state legal service authority or else national legal service authority and also district legal service authority based upon case by case they can waiver off and they can give free legal aid for the people who are vulnerable especially senior citizens so what do you mean by legal aid what is this free legal aid means free legal aid means advice that is legal advice counseling legal consultation and also how to fight the case so a advocate will spend time explaining the procedure and also what are the rights under various laws representation of advocate in the court proceedings that means lawyer fees is paid by the legal service authority various court fees processing fees expenses of witness various other legal charges will be paid by the state legal service authority preparation of pleading application writing memo printing translation name the things it will be provided by the state legal service authority that means it is completely free there is no hidden charges no lawyer no court will ask for money it will be paid by the legal service authority further the legal aid also means spreading legal awareness legal literacy through various seminars workshops at the same time forming local adalats local adalats basically permanent and temporary to settle the disputes amicably between the two parties so i will be making a new video on lok adalats in a short while so which court provide this free legal aid where can i access this free legal aid free legal aid can be accessed in various place depending upon the authorities they have been formed there are four important authorities have been formed one is national legal service authority at the national capital at delhi state legal service authority at every state capital especially in karnataka in bangalore district legal service authority in every district headquarters taluk legal service authority at every taluk uh, places and these authorities are placed in respective courts for example taluk legal service authorities are established in the taluk court complex district legal service authorities are established in district court complex at the same time supreme court legal service committee and high court legal service committees are also formed they are placed in their respective supreme court and high court so if you want to access these authorities please go to the nearest court it may be taluk court or it may be district court go and approach this court and ask for where is the legal service authority available to any advocate they will guide you to the nearest legal service authority either in the district court or in the taluk court but you have to approach the taluk court or the district court or the high court for getting this benefit so these are the various courts where you can approach are there cases for which no legal aid is given of course there are certain cases where legal aid will be denied especially in defamation cases malicious post prosecution cases a person charged with contempt of court legal aid will not be given perjury that basically a person under oath is telling lie if the court comes to know legal aid legal aid will be denied relating to any election any dispute related to election will not be given wherever the offenses fine is less than 50 rupees or 50 rupees legal aid will not be given it will be denied economic offenses related matters again legal aid will not be given immoral traffic act under that only the victim will get the person who is doing this trafficking will not be able to get the legal aid free legal aid with this how can i apply for free legal aid this is one of the biggest question where a persons with mental illness and disability have so if you are a persons with mental illness or a persons with disability please talk to your doctor ask them please give me a certificate so that i can approach if you are a psychiatrist or any physician or a doctor please give a certificate telling that he is a person so and so he has been on treatment with him and if he is a mentally ill you document that he is a mentally ill and if he is a disabled person document he is a disabled 
and also ask him to take a disability certificate and approach to the nearest court, maybe taluk court or a district court where legal service authorities are established. And they can approach either online or offline. Offline is basically going to the uh, going to these places, maybe the taluk court or district court, approaching them during the working hours between 9 to 5 o'clock and requesting for free legal aid with these letters. And if the if they are found suitable, free legal aid will be given. And there are formats available for asking for an application. If the person is illiterate, there are paralegal volunteers available in all these legal service authorities. And these paralegal volunteers will help the illiterate to file the application for free legal aid. So this is one of the important, what we call it as move taken by the legal service authority to provide justice for even for the illiterate and poor people. And there is online, uh, what we call it as filing of application for legal aid. From NALSA portal, it is there. That is National Legal Service Authority Act. If you go there, you can file for free legal aid sitting at your home at your ease 24 bar 7. If you have to go in person, it is only working hours between 9 to 4. Whereas under the online, you can do 24 bar 7 anytime. This is the website nalsa.gov.in. Under this, you have to type something and give it. It is available in two languages at present, English and Hindi. So you can also track the application of your application for free legal aid, where, where is the status, where it is pending, you can look for that. Further, the government of India has come up with a, an important application called as Nyaya Bundu application. It is a pro bono legal services provided by Department of Justice. This is an application similar to Uber where there is a service provider that is advocates and the service user that is customers or the applicant. Both are brought on a single platform to provide services and also take services. So this Nyaya Bundu is a pro bono legal services, an application which enables many lawyers who want to do free services to persons who are vulnerable. And this application, first we will talk about the users, that is the applicant or a person who is vulnerable who seeks for legal aid. He will download the app. At present, the app is available in Android form, that is Android platform. He will download it. He will register the profile, his name, his photograph, his ID, maybe other card. The Department of Justice will authenticate and he will be registered. Once he is registered, he will give the details, case details, applications he will upload. And he has an opportunity and he, he can also nominate a lawyer. If the advocate accepts it, yes, he will go ahead with the case. The advocate also has a freedom to reject the case. And again, it will be a new advocate will be given. And once the advocate accepts the case, the case will be taken to the court. And then there the justice will be delivered depending upon the case by case merit. For the lawyers who provide services, the lawyer who wants to do pro bono services can register here. And once they are registered, depending upon their area, depending upon their expertise, either civil cases, criminal cases, family matters or RTA cases, depending upon that, their profile will be ready. And depending upon the applicant, the application will match with the applicant along with the advocate for free uh, legal services or pro bono services. This is completely free. The app is also free. The advocate service is also free and many of these applicants use it. Unfortunately, many of our persons with mental illness, persons with disability do not know about this app. And please do uh, tell our patients and various people to download this app. How much is the expenses incurred in various stages of the case proceedings? Let me be very clear. There is no expenses either through Nyaya Bundu app or through online or through in person. It is completely free no hidden charges, no lawyer can ask for fees. And if the lawyer is demanding free or lawyer is doing something which you are uncomfortable, you can talk to the respective state legal service authority member secretary about the lawyer's behavior or he is asking money. The lawyer will be immediately changed. At any stage of the case proceedings, lawyer can be changed or a request for lawyer change can be requested. At the same time, you may have to provide certain important applications or documents. It may be a CST document or it may be income certificate, affidavit or else even they may ask you to provide 
what we call it as the persons with mental illness certificate to provide free legal aid. So please be prepared to provide these certificates. To conclude, my dear friends, free legal aid is for vulnerable population and please do make it popular so that our persons with mental illness or disability or vulnerable population gets the benefit of this free legal aid. And do not hesitate to contact legal service authority. If you are a psychiatrist or a doctor working either in the private or in the public, don't hesitate to contact them. Their numbers are available in their respective state legal service authority websites. You can contact the number, request for help for your patients. Whoever is a patient, you can refer them and you can give a simple application or a certificate for help. And also, if the person is educated, ask them to download Nyaya Bundu app for their utilization. Dear friends, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Stay safe. Thank you.